Hey everybody, this is Strategy Wizard again, and this is my cousin Jared. Hello. Today we're going to be doing our top 10 games of all time. That's going to be board games mainly because it's a board game channel, but as a nice friendly bonus, we're going to do our favorite video games as well, which will be at the second half of this video. So, you want to go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, I'll let you go first. All right. Uh, well, honorable mentions is what we're going to start with for our board game uh, list. Yeah, and I have three on my list. Uh, the first one we're going to have is Dice Throne, made by Roxley. Um, I have recently gotten this, and it's been nonstop fun. I unfortunately haven't really had a chance to play it. I've only played it by myself and just done a few test it, a little bit of testing. But it combines a lot of my favorite things in games. The fantasy theme, uh, dice rolling, kind of push your luck. And the upgradable characters is fantastic. Another game on my honorable mentions is uh, Dinosaur Island again. I recently kickstarted when the expansion came out, and I picked up both this one, the expansion, and the uh, two-player game. This is a lot of fun. It's a great engine builder. The theming's a lot of fun. Very Jurassic Park-like, but with a nice little kind of 80s twist. Um, it's a lot of fun. It looks pretty full, too. Oh yeah, the, bo the box does not pack very well <laughs> back together. Um, and the last game I have for honorable mentions, which I do not have yet, actually it actually arrives Monday, is Sorcerer. And the reason why it's on the list is because it's from a company I really like, White Wizard. The you have faith that awesome. it's going to I have there. all the faith that it, <laughs> he has faith that it will be belong okay. on the honorable mentions. Um, it will most likely hit top ten next time we do this. You feel that confident? I think it, it looks good. I love the how everything looks. The idea, it's, it's kind of a deck builder, but it's not because you take three separate things. You have character, lineage, and location, and you can mix and match all of those. So everything variability. Yeah, the... It, there are so many options to what you can do. They all play differently from what I understand, and it looks fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it. I don't know much about it, but I am looking forward to trying it out. Uh, my honorable mentions are, I don't, I'm not going to pull them out and show them to you, but Dark Moon, which you can maybe see right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. But Dark Moon is a social deduction style game with, with, with dice rolling elements that basically make people seem like they're suspicious, even if they're not. And, th and I, I, that mechanic to me is just genius because you secretly roll behind your player screen and you have to set out something publicly, but if you set out something bad, people don't know if you only had bad results. And I, I like that mechanic and overall it's just a great game. Um, Dead of Winter, which is I'm super famous by Plaid Hat Games, uh, by the way, that was Stronghold Games from Dark Moon. But um, Plaid Hat Games does Dead of Winter, and it's a super duper awesome uh, survival game. It, but I imagine it as Walking the Dead, well, uh, the Walking Dead, the board game, just in winter. <laughs> but it's it really cool. I've never actually played with a trader. I've only played fully cooperative, and only pl ever played it two players with my wife. But I like the mechanics. I like that that feeling of tension as everything's building up and you're trying to take risks and go find what you need. That's really fun. Um, got three more. Star Realms, great game. Deck building, White Wizard, like uh, Sorcerer. Awesome, awesome game. I just like, to me, it's one of the best pure deck builders, if not the best. I, think, I really think it is just amazing. Um, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, another social deduction game. Really enjoy it. Silly fun, but it's so good every time I play. And then Pokemon, the trading card game, is probably a surprise to most people, but I grew up with it. It's, I've never played Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh! or any other trading card games, but that one I grew up with, and I, I just was always fascinated with the way the decks could be built, the card combinations you could do, and I always just felt really good because I'd have an awesome deck and I'd see it play out, and it, the science of it, I thought, was well done. So I really enjoyed that, but didn't make it my top ten. So we'll go ahead and move on to that. Um, I would like to make one small change to my honorable mentions. I would like to also uh, add Pokemon Trading Card Game to my list. <laughs> For pretty much every reason that you said, we grew up with it. We've all played. We played probably in the past five years or so. We've probably played at least once. It's still good. It's still fun. Granted, some of the rule changes from when we were younger are a little eh. different. Yeah. And the cards are definitely a lot stronger. Yeah, it's a pay-to-play game kind of but sort of at this point. But it's still really fun. It yeah. still holds up, and I also really And the old cards that I have and my decks, I don't have to buy more stuff for us to have fun mm -hmm. and play with the decks that we have. So it, 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 that keeps it fun without having to keep on spending money. Okay, so starting off the top ten, I actually don't have an example for this because I didn't bother bringing it because I don't even own it, technically. Uh. A game all the way from the 40s. Whoa, what in the world is this? Uh, it's called Yahtzee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which I know that's kind of a very strange game to be on a top ten list. 
especially with some of the other ones that you'll see here. But that's a game that I grew up playing, and I still play today. Every time I go visit my mom, we play probably five or six games. It's just that enjoyable. I love pressure luck games. It's simple, and it works. It's just something I've really enjoyed, and that's why it hits number 10 on my top 10. I don't want to put a give it any more credit than that, but I like it enough, and it's been with me forever, to hit number 10. Uh, any, any game that you grow up with and you still like it now, that's a good sign yeah. that you should probably like it a whole lot. And me personally, I definitely can't agree that my like of Yahtzee is to that extent. And I guess I feel like Yahtzee has been <sighs> conquered by other things like King of Tokyo, which you haven't played. And I, w I would agree with that. But that being said, I don't think Yahtzee's a bad game, and I like Pressure Luck too, but there's also other Pressure Luck games that I like more that aren't even going to be in this list, but I'll just throw out one. To me, uh, Ink and Gold is a great Pressure pressure Luck game, which also Jared has not played, but that's okay. One day he will, and then he'll change his mind and drop that thing off his top ten. We'll I'm see. just kidding. <laughs> okay, my top ten, uh, I do have this one. Uh, I have all mine, actually. But, um, I, no, yeah, I have them all. Uh, Covert Action. This is a game that I have reviewed, and unfortunately, I don't think you can get this anymore. I mean, you might be able to get it on eBay, but it's not in print, not to my knowledge. But Covert Action, to me, is one of the just most hilarious and fun social... It's, it's not even social deduction. It's, it kind of is, kind of isn't. Mm -hmm. It's just hilarious because everyone is two, two teams, unless you have a lot of players, and you can have three teams. But basically, it's two teams different characters they could be, and each person is dealt one randomly. You could be the sniper who has to shoot the opposing sniper, or the mole on their team, or you might be a bodyguard trying to protect the sniper, you might be the cleaner who might be the sniper if there is no sniper on your team, and all these things, but you, there's no rules as to how you figure out who's who. So for us, it always ends up this, this nudging and whispering oh, in each other's yeah. ear, trying to pass information to your teammates, but you might pass information to the mole, so the mole tries to get that information to the opposing sniper, and it's just hilarious. It's just a hilarious, fun game. Really, really enjoy it. Covert Action. And that was by R&R &R Games. Uh, yeah, R&R &R Games Incorporated. So, so fun. And, and I will agree with that game is fantastic, and it is so unassuming. <laughs> the small box, yeah, the little bitty, the, the goofy box. art on it. It <laughs> is more fun than you can imagine. It's fan. I mean, social deduction, I guess, is what you would call. It, but it's all. It's a very poker face reading game, um, and it's a lot of fun, especially when you have two moles who like you know nudge each other under the table and they just look at each other. They lock eyes and they're like, uh oh. Shoot him, shoot him. It, it turns into a, a yelling contest, but it's a lot of fun. And yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I'm, I'm surprised that made your top ten, but at the same time, I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's, it, it is fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's just we, we played it so many times, and it just it, it's the, fun. The time. only problem is you have to have at least four players, mm -hmm. and it really doesn't get good until five or six. Well, six is kind of the six is the sweet the, spot. The sweet spot. It gets better from there, but. It's, but that and that's why I haven't played it in a long time now because we haven't had that big of a group together. But it's so good. Okay, number nine. All right, moving on to number nine. This came out in 2012 from Pic uh, not Pi uh, Level 99 Games, and it's Pixel Tactics, um, made by D. Brad Talton Jr. Um, the reason why I like this game is it's actually one of the first games that I bought uh, once I started collecting, and he explained it to me. It's very similar to Ogre Battle 64, which keep that in mind. That might come up later. Yeah. Um, and I like that idea. You play characters on the grid. And depending on their placement, whether it's the first, second, or third row, they have different abilities. There's so much, I don't want to say customization, but there's so many options of what you can do with your hand. Your hand can do a million different things, and that's what makes it so fun. Um, the characters are real cool. It all ties into the kind of the level 99 world of the Indians world that they've made. Um, it's just a lot of fun. One of my favorite games, and that's why it's on my number nine. I, I can't blame him for including it because the grid-based um, style, it's the exact same grid as Ogre Battle 64 for anyone who's familiar, at 3x3. Three three. It's just that you can fill up the whole grid and where you are just like in... Uh, Ogre Battle. It, where you are matters. It matters even more here because oh, yes. <laughs> your, your abilities in the front are totally different than your abilities in the middle and the back. In most cases, they're totally different. In some cases, you don't even have an ability mm -hmm. depending on which card you have. But the fact that you're constantly getting new cards and trying to put, figure out the best place to put them to protect yourself and do the most damage, wow. And you can play some cards as actions and traps and other things. There's so many different things you can do with your cards that you always feel like you have something cool to do. Okay, and to me, uh, the artist Fabio Fontes, I love everything he does. He does a lot of artwork for Level 99 and it's 
Yeah. That's why I like the games. So part of it is is the art. The yeah, the artwork style is, is fantastic. And it's funny because, you know, all the endings things, ha for the most part, have a more gritty look. Mm -hmm. And Pixel Tactics is, is one of the exceptions, but it fits so well because it's pixel tactics. They're mm -hmm. taking that and making it something that's like a throwback to the old days, and it's just cool and it's fun. Also, real quick, if you if you have played the game or look at two, they're actually coming out with an online version on PC. Um, you can go to the website. And I think you can. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. And I played a little bit, and it's a lot of fun. It is drastically different from the card game. It played at different rules. Kind of. Uh, it's just small. There's like a little more resource management as far as how the game operates. But if you're interested, definitely go to their website. And I'm sure you can find it through there. I don't quite know how. I did not know that. That's cool. But uh, it, it, it's interesting. Cool. I like it. Um, uh, here comes the <laughs> big surprise on my list. Unbelievable that this game. Camel Up. Now, some of you prop might already know about this. Maybe played the original. This is the second edition. Uh, who is it designed by? Oh, yeah. Stefan Bogan and published by Egbert Spiel. Whenever I got this, I thought, you know, it'll probably be pretty fun because a lot of people like it, but I wasn't expecting to really enjoy it, and I just cannot say enough good things about this game. Out of the blue. This is the newest game on my list, without a doubt, and I've played it only three times, but trust me, three times is enough to know this game is insanely good. You're betting. It's a betting game. You're betting on these camels who are going around this track, and but there's two crazy camels that are going the wrong way, and they can pick up and take the other camels the wrong direction, and the way you just... The, the upsets that happen, you'll think, oh man, I'm going to bet on this camel to be in the lead this round, and you will be blown away by how wrong you are, even whenever you think there's no way you could be. I mean, it just, it, and, and it's quick. Everyone's turn is super fast, and you're interested in everyone's everyone else's turn because their turns either affect you somehow directly in what you can do, or it affects what you've bet on, so you're wanting to see the result, and man... Gosh, I know Jared's probably rolling his eyes over here, but he hasn't played it, so he doesn't know, so uh, he, he can't say too much, but that game, Camel Up is super good. Uh, the only thing I can say about that game is surprised. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Um, so, but I, I do look forward to playing it. I mean, it's... It, it, yeah, you'll be surprised. It will blow your mind. All right. I'll do a review for that one soon, but now you already know what I think about it pretty much. All right, I guess I'll move on to number eight. Yep. Number eight, uh, this game came out in 2011 for Fancy Flight. And that is Elder Sign. Um, this is actually one of the very first games that I think you introduced to us when we first yeah, started. Um, this is made by Kevin Wilson and Richard uh, Lanius. Sorry if I butchered that. This game, uh, uh, Pressure Luck is the name of this game. That's part of why I like it. I do enjoy the Lovecraftian, uh, the Arkham kind of universe. But this one's not so heavy handed with it. It's just like kind of there and I'm okay with that. The theming's good for what it is. But the gameplay to me is where it's at. You have different choices of what you want to do as far as your goal. Um, you have like, I think it's eight cards set up, uh, eight objectives at a time, and you pick the one you, that your character is best suited to take on. I think on. it's six. It might be, okay, it might be six. I'm looking at um, cheating because I'm looking at the back of the box. Okay, yeah, six of them. I, can't, <laughs> I, I clearly cannot see the back of the box. Um, but it's just a lot of fun. Uh, all the characters are interesting. They all have their own separate abilities and mechanics that... The more players you have, they yeah, work together. Yeah, the more players you have, the better you can, it is. You can become synergistic with each other. But on the flip side, the more players you have, the quicker the time goes, and the more of these bad cards will come up. So it's kind of a give and take with more well, cards. Well, it, it, it takes longer to come back around to your turn for you to okay. use your ability, which means that the really good abilities don't get activated as often. Yes. But I will say this. It goes back along with your Yahtzee thing. You like the dice roll and mm -hmm. push your luck kind of mechanism, and that is, that's, that's what that is. That's the quintessential uh, pressure luck. Basically, you take Yahtzee, give it some theme, and give it some amazing artwork, and a few extra mechanism and mm -hmm. items and stuff like that, and that's what you get. Uh, and the tension that this game could build. Yeah. When yeah, you're uh, wanting to. Even whenever you're creaming it, you're still oh, yeah. cringing at the edge of the table. Oh, it's and just uh, knuckle biting. And then you, whenever you win, you're like, why were we worried? But there's oh, something yeah. about this game that just, it makes you feel nervous. Because you see, oh, we're going to get the Doom token on the Doom track and all this other stuff. Cthulhu's going to show up. I mean, if you have severe anxiety, I would not recommend this <laughs> yeah, game. Because it will make it you nervous. Up. 
Uh, and you haven't even have you played with the expansion uh, Gates of Arc and that makes it way harder. I can't remember if I played that with you we or not. Played with a few, but I don't know if I played with that one. That one, oh my gosh, that makes it that makes it to where it is very very challenging. I think I've never I might have won one once, but I think I may have never won with it. It's just, <laughs> but it also makes it more fun in some ways because it gives you some secret. Cha uh, the, 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 the objectives are face down, and you have to go to it to see what it is, and you only know if it's easy, medium, or hard. That's I all you know. I definitely did not try that. Yeah. That it, sounds horrific. It's, it's very challenging, but that's what I think I like about Elder Sign. They have several, I have two expansions at this point, and mm -hmm. there's, they keep coming out with more, and I don't really need more, because really, the expansions that, that I have, which is the uh, Omens, I think it was Omens, and... Gosh, I can't remember what it's called now. I think it's Omens and the Gates of Arkham. Mm -hmm. They add so much extra stuff to it that if you if you're not satisfied, I don't even know what to tell you. Not to say there's anything wrong with getting more, but I mean it just there's a lot of good stuff in the game. So I don't blame you for having that on your list. And if you do want to experience it, it is also on uh, mobile devices. Oh, that's right, sure is. Okay, my number eight is this wonderful little two-player only game, Thunder and Lightning. Thunder and Lightning is published by Z-Man Games and uh, designed by Richard Borg. And basically, the way I look at this game is it's Stratego, the card game, but so much better because you have a hand. Because not only do you have these the troops, you don't have nearly as many. You don't have this massive setup of all these troops. And Stratego for me is a classic game. I always really enjoyed it. That was one of my favorite classic old games. But Thunder and Lightning takes that. You have way less troops and. They're, they're in columns that you, you can only attack the front the front uh, unit in each column, but you have a hand of cards, and that hand of cards can do different things. You can play Ravens to try to get cards out of your opponent's hand and theoretically get rid of their the card they're trying to protect, which is either Odin's Ring or Odin's Crown, depending on which side you're playing. And both sides are identical. You don't have any special abilities or anything like that as far as... There's no difference between playing Thor or Loki, who is what you, that's, that's who you're choosing here. But the way your cards can affect them and the battles that happen, I mean, it just has so much going on. I, I can't say enough good things about it, but it's just a great game. It, best two play, what, is it the best two-player game? Uh, I think it's the best two-player game that I have. Yeah. This game's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on to seven. All right, moving on number seven. I got this game last year, and it came out in 2016, and I believe, yeah, it won Game of the Year for 2017 um, at the Essen Spiel over in, I think that's Germany. Yeah. Um, and this is King Domino, uh, published by Blue Orange Games and designed by Bruno Cathla. Cathal. Bruno Cathal. Bruno Cathal. Thank you. I honestly did not expect to like this game. When I very first saw anything about it, I'm like, that looks boring. Like, yeah, Dom who wants to play Domino's? I have not played it, but I ha I can share that sentiment. I, I, looking at it, I'm like, oh. When I got this, I was like, eh, that might be doable. So I, I got it mostly to play with my mom and uh, my girlfriend. Just It's kind of a light game. This game is fantastic. <laughs> um, it is more than just Domino's. It's, I mean, it is what it is. Well, essentially, what you have, you have a kingdom a single square. And you have these two. You have these pieces that have two tiles on each one, or two two tiles on each piece, and each one can have like a like a forest, a plains, uh, fields, uh, water, and there's like mines and stuff like that, wasteland. And the goal is to keep those together, to pe to piece around your kingdom together, but within the constraints of I think a five by five grid. Um, the more pairs you have together, the more points, and then there's crowns, and those are multipliers. As for as simple of a game this is, it's a lot of fun. I have not played with the expansion, and I have not played Queen Domino. The reason being, I'm happy with how this is. I've seen how those expansions work, and I don't want to play them. This just works. It's, Clean and simple. It, it's what I want in a small family size game, and it's perfect for that, and that is why... It is on, I believe. What I so, would you say that's your family game of all best family game of all time? Was no, it, it's not my. It is not the best family game. Of wow, all time. It, I, is, it is number two. Okay, <laughs> it is, well, it is not number one, but I, it's a really good game. Well, hey, so so well, I'll just say this: Camel Up is my favorite family game of all time. I, I wish I would have said that, but that's that's where Camel Up is, and this is your second. That means you have one really high in the family yes. game. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Okay, number seven. Oh yeah, this is a must have. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Battlecon, oh yes. This is uh, Guilty Gear the game, or yeah. I guess Blast Blue the game, whatever yeah. fighting video game that you, in that genre, that style, that's what this is. And the card game, I should say, or 
would you call it a card game? I don't know what you call it. It's hard, it's hard to call what this is. It's just <laughs> awesome. Basically, you just take those games and you condense almost every element of those, the meat of those games into a board game. That's what this is. You get, you know, actions where you're you're advancing quickly and attacking, and you have, oh my gosh, I. I I don't. I can't even say. It's just level ninety nine games. Uh, uh, is that Brad Talton Jr. again? It's just great. If you like those fighting games and you want a board game version of it, buy it. That's all I really have to say about it. Yeah, I mean it's it's fantastic. You and I have done a review on it. Uh, you can check it on the channel. It's one of my favorite games. Imagine that. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, gee, could it show up? Later? <laughs> could it show up? But it's a lot of fun. The breadth of characters is so great. It's amazing how much variety there is in the characters, and yet it still is pretty darn balanced. Yeah, nothing feels like, oh, I'm just going to come in and hammer you away, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, well, your character's actually pretty good. <laughs> ne never assume anything about the characters, because every character has their own separate set of cards that makes them so drastically unique to their own selves. And that's amazing. There's, like, I think there's like 60 characters at this point. Something like that. It's Might be even much. 80, and there's a few more on the way. You know, and I mean, it's yeah. Still waiting for Battlecon and Least to show up. Yeah, Battlecon and Least. I'm excited. I have it backed. I also got some of the promo characters from that. Um, I did not back the Wanderers. Yeah, I didn't get Wanderers, but I will get it eventually. That's that's just too good eventually. So yeah, uh, fantastic oh, game. Oh, yes. All right, moving on to number six. Uh, this is the game that I honestly have not played that much, but honestly, it's that good to me. And that is Role Player. This is published by Thunderworks Games and designed by Keith. Uh, I have no clue. Um, Majeka? Hmm. Ma Matejka? Matejka. Oh. Um, what this game is, is basically what you're going to do is you're building a character for Dungeons and Dragons. That is the whole point of this game. Let me move this up here. There we go. The whole point is to basically roll your character's stats. But beyond that, whatever you roll, you then you want to place in certain spots to get certain bonuses. Every character has a class and I believe a... Uh, I forget what it is. It's like a, oh, good lord, what is that called? The uh, like personality trait. Oh yeah. Um, and each each of these aspects of your character, your roles, you want to place in certain ways to get to maximize points. And it's a kind of a point salad in a way, but it does so much more. It takes the mechanic of rolling for your character in D and D or Pathfinder or which have you, which normally takes seconds. five <laughs> seconds, and draws it out until like. An hour. And yeah. it's awesome. Because you're collecting gear and all that. Now, there is an expansion, which I do want to get, but I'm afraid it'll soil the fun that this game is. And what the expansion is, is you take the characters you have built, and now you go fight monsters. So it just further expands upon just beyond building a character. But for me, this game is fantastic. I love it. It's dice rolling, and that's all that matters to me. Uh, I, I'm just going to say this. I have played it. I don't feel the same way that Jared feels about it. I do like it. But it's not, it doesn't creep up anywhere close to my top. But it is a cool game. For a game that, that takes that making a character into a whole game, it is a, it's a very impressive adaption of that. I will say that. And I will say this too whenever you get to the video games, I don't have this, this game in my mind in my honorable mentions, but I'm going to mention it here because this game makes me think of it. And that's Bard's Tale, which is the old MS DOS PC game. You roll the dice, essentially, to, to make your characters, and I really like that game, and that's what that game makes me think of, so that's cool. Okay, so now it's time for my number six, which, this is sad, but I have only played this game one time. I feel bad about that, but because putting it on my list with only one play oh, seems a little ridiculous, but wow, let me tell you something. Deception Murder in Hong Kong is so retardedly good. Okay, so it's, made, it's, it's Gray Fox Games, and it's designed by, gosh, I don't even remember who. I don't even think it I says on it. here. But anyway, it, it the problem with this game, and the reason why I played it once, oh, yeah, the game by Toby Ho, okay. And this is a game that, the problem with it is why I can't get it to the table as much is you have to have four players. And that's unfortunate because this game is so good in the social deduction category. The, the way you, you, everyone, ha there's a forensic scientist who is giving clues to the other players who are who are the eight the, the detectives and the killer, and there are other roles that you could have. You could have an accomplice, you could have a witness, but the way that they're giving clues to help the good guys figure out who the bad guy is is just that's a unique mechanism. And first of all, it gives asymmetry, which I like. You can take turns playing as the as the forensic scientist, but no matter what role you play, it's interesting and it's 
And you're, you're either going, boy, I hope they get the clues I'm trying to give them, or if you're the good guys, you're going, man, I really hope that I can, I can figure out what he's trying to tell me, or if you're the bad guy, you're going, how can I mislead these people so they don't figure out it's me? All those different elements just work in this game. You haven't played it, but... I have not, but uh, not only do you have it, but my friends have it, and they also speak very highly of this game. It's one that I do want to play yeah. very soon. This is my favorite social deduction game, period. I've, I've played The Resistance, Covert Action, uh, One-Eyed Ultimate Werewolf, uh, Dark Moon. This one is my favorite at this point. All right, we're moving on to number five. Uh, I kind of have two games in this spot here. Uh... It'll make more sense when I get into it. The first one came out in 2014, the second one came out in 2016, and that is oh. Hero Realms and Star Realms, the, uh, both made by White Wizard Games and designed both by Robert Doherty. The reason why I have both here is I have played Star Realms, which this is Hero Realms, I have played Star Realms, I own it, I own three copies so I can play with more players, because the base game is two players, but if you have more, you can play with more. This one, out the gate, plays with four, so that's very nice, but... It is, to me, the best deck builder you can get. It, I, uh, The first deck builder I ever played that I can recall was Dominion, and I thought, eh, it's fun. Then I played this, and, and it, this blew it, it out of the water. It, yeah. Now, I have only truthfully played Star Realms. I have played both it in card form and on the mobile version, which is fantastic if you yeah. would like to try it. I have not played this version, but I know enough of what makes it different. The... It's still the same concept. You have a market row, everyone has their own hand of starting cards, and you buy cards from the market to build your deck up to then fight your opponent and defeat them and take all their life points away. This one does the same thing. There's still four separate sets of cards, and they all have their own kind of similar theming. However, what makes this one fun is the starting cards, you can change it by picking a class. Each class has their own specific set of starting cards. And they have specific abilities that they can use once per game or, I think, multiple times. Or it's kind of it's weird how that operates. But fantastic deck builder. I love the art on this one. I'm not a big fan of the space theme, which I'm glad they came out with a more medieval theme because I prefer that. But it, it's one of the funnest games I've ever played, and I could play it over and over again. Okay, so that was uh, Star Realms. I haven't played Hero Realms, but Star Realms is on my honorable mention, so obviously I really like it. And I, I think I didn't quite give enough credit. I think I said it's one of the best. It is the best deck builder, in my opinion. I mean, it really is just, it's so good. It's so clean. It's so simple. The, I, the iconography is just basic. If you can't figure it out, then you probably need to go back to playing Sorry and Checkers. But it's just a great game, so I agree 100%. And if you've ever played the Legendary series of games, uh, like Marvel Predator oh, yeah. or any of that, it's in the same vein, but much more simpler, but that simplicity is what makes it so good. Okay, so my number five is a game that I really want to review soon, and that is Kemet, or Kemet, whatever you want to call it, by Matigo and... I don't know who. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Jacques Barriot and Guillaume Montiag or Montiag. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing on that on those pronunciations. I apologize for that. But Kimmet, what makes this game just surge for me is it's a dudes on a map game, which you will come to find out that dudes on a map is one of my favorite mechanisms. And this particular one, it just everyone starts off equal distant from each other. Everyone literally is like three or four spaces away. But you can teleport, and the most important part is you buy these tiles that give you special abilities. So even though you start off not unique, you become very, very different and unique as you play because people will be buying things that now you can't buy. There's only so many, a lot of times only one of each tile. In some cases, there's two of some tiles, and you're, you're picking these things that make you more, have more offense, more defense, get more money so that you can spend more or all kinds of different things. And then you can buy these monsters. You get a big war elephant, a big snake, and just so, a scorpion. It's just, there's so much going on. It looks good, and... Uh, the one thing that is different at the start is you have your big uh, four-sided dice that are your pyramids. Mm -hmm. You have to choose, I think, the level. You have a total distribution of if you want it to be an art at level three of one, level one of another. You have a certain amount, so you can start off buying better versions of some tiles. So some people might be going for the offensive tiles early, really good ones. And other people might be going for the defense. Other people might be going for the, for the, the white, which is more... 
economic. But then you had the expansion toss seti, and you get black as a tile set, and that just throws in a whole other thing, and it makes it to where now there's four pyramids to choose from. You not only have to choose what the order is or how powerful you want each one to start, but now you have to decide which one am I not even going to be able to buy this game unless you go capture someone's, then, but that's hard to do. Great game. Oh, wonderful. Um, I played it without the expansion, and it's it's really good. Um, I think it the that, it has miniatures, does it not? Yes. Yeah. Hey, the miniatures are fantastic. I can't remember if I was getting confused with them, but yeah. it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the whole pyramid with each of the pyramids, you have to choose what you want. I mean, it there's a lot of planning ahead for this game. There's more. You can kind of do a, kind of like a quick and try to get in and do what you need to do strategy, or you can kind of go for the long game, which to me. It's probably, I don't want to say it's my favorite dudes on the map game, because that's coming up. <laughs> but it is really good, I really like it. I will just say this, one thing I like about it is it promotes conflict. You get points for being the attacker and winning. That, I like. It makes people want to get in there to get points by killing each other. And so turtling doesn't really get you anywhere in this game, which is awesome, in my opinion. There was something else that I was thinking about that I really wanted. Oh, card combat. I like the card combat, because you have a, everyone has the same exact cards. And what you choose to play makes a big difference and there's a certain amount of bluffing going on mm -hmm. and there's it, it, that I just like card combat so that's another thing that makes this really high for me yeah all right moving on we are now going to number four this is my favorite family friendly game no let's check it out I can't uh, wait well it's kind of weird I was doing some research on this apparently the first very first rendition of this came out in 2004 well it's only been recently re-released in 2016 Made by Spin Master by Gordon Hamilton, and that is Santorini. This was in 2004? The original, from based on what BGG has said, the original basis of this game was 2004. But it didn't look anything like this, no. I'm guessing. It, it had the buildings, but they were very crude. Okay. De definitely look at those interesting, but basically what this game is, you at its base level, you have two workers, and you move around on this grid, and you want to build up a building. And if you build one all the way to near the top without a cap, and you get a character on top, you win. That might sound simple, however, that's where the Greek gods come in. Each character is given a power, essentially, and boy, they drastically change the game. Um, we're talking being able to build twice, being able to move more, being able to move across the map, beating your opponents by standing next to them. Medusa, the most cheating card in the game. Um, <laughs> This game is fantastic. I really like it. It was a very pleasant surprise when I got it. Um, and it looks good. It looks good. It, it, it does have a very childish look to it, but let me tell you, the strategy is real. It is. It really is. Um, it's one of my favorite games to play. You can play it with two players. You can play it, I believe, up to six, actually. Is it? No, two to four. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you could have teams, but no, up to four. Um, it's a lot of fun. I will say I do have some issues with some of the cards. I think it's Persephone. Her wording is very strange. Um, I do have the expansion, the Golden Fleece. I have not even opened it yet. I don't know why, I just haven't. Um, but, but that's okay, because it's great just the way it is. Oh yeah, but I've heard that the expansion for this game definitely makes puts it up at that next level, and I am excited to try it. But So Santorini is my favorite family-friendly uh, game. Okay. I'll just say, for me, it's up there competing for my favorite abstract game but it's not on my list but the only the other abstract that competes in my mind is Onitama that those two excellent abstract games um, okay number four big box coming up oh okay another dudes on a map game and one that is sadly out of print because games workshop and and uh, fantasy flight have broken ways they've taken for whatever reason, I don't know why, it's depressing, but Fancy Flight made this, and it was designed by some awesome person, uh, J James Nif is it Niffin, I guess that's how you pronounce that, Samuel W. Bailey and Corey Kaniska. Good luck, good luck with that. Yeah, <laughs> but this game, not only is it in an awesome big box, it just makes you feel good whenever you pick it up, but you feel like getting a little workout, but... The miniatures are insane. I did a review for this too, and you can go check that out, but man, the miniatures are great, the... The way, it has card combat, like Kemet, and it has dice, but it has dice in a way that's very, it's not one to six, and if you go to six, you get a hit. There, it's attack, defense, or morale. It's just three results you can get. So they only slightly modify the overall outcome of the battle, and the card combat, you actually, it's got light deck building, too. You can buy cards and add to your 
deck that make it that can change what cards you have available in each battle. So you have unique ships, and each faction is different. There's four factions. Each faction is slightly different. There, so you have stats on each ship you have. You have you know the dice going on. You have custom cards. Each mm -hmm. faction has their own cards. So you feel very different. And the way, and even the board set is modular with the tiles that make the planet systems and everything. Wow, it's just resource management going on because you're trying to collect the resources to help you build more. You build, you're building cities to make yourself be able to buy better cards. You're getting uh, factories to build more units. You're getting uh, bastions to de help defend yourself from other people. And you're trying to go get objectives that are in other people's systems. So again, it's a game that promotes conflict. You have to go fight and push through if you want to win. And I like it whenever a dude's on a map game motivates going in for the kill. Mm -hmm. So obviously I have no problem with direct conflict. Direct conflict is one of the features that I look for in most of the games that I like. So Forbidden Stars, thank you very much. You're awesome. That is for me probably the best Warhammer 40k game that I've played and I haven't played that many. I own two other ones I haven't even played yet. But honestly, I, I would like to have that game on my top ten. The only reason why I haven't because I haven't played it enough. You've played it once, right? I've only played it that one time, and that is not a game I can play once and go, oh, yeah, this game's great. Yeah, I've played there's it. There's so much to it. It's Yeah, there's a lot. For only having, is it three factions? Four. For, yeah, for only having four factions, it is still, there's so much. But it's fantastic. It's really good. Yeah, I, I highly it's, recommend it. Whew, yeah, thank you very much. All right. Uh, this is probably the newest game. Yeah, no, it is the newest game on my list. It came out last year, made by Isaac Vega and published by Plaid Hat. Ah! That is Starship <laughs> Samurai. I did not own this game. This is uh, this is his. I want this game a lot, regardless <laughs> of him having it. And the reason being, I absolutely love Gundams. I build the models. I love them. I've liked Gundams since I was a kid. I first watched Gundam Wing. This is Gundam the game. You have giant robots. You take them to places and you kill people. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Um, no, but there, there's a lot more. The whole, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called, the tracks. Oh, the clan? The, yeah, the clan tracks. Allegiance tracks. Yeah, the allegiance tracks. That, to me, is actually what makes this game a lot of fun. Despite having dudes on a map. I guess you call that dudes on a map. This is my favorite quasi-dudes on a map. Yeah, I, I consider um, this more just area control. So yeah. It's not a map, it's just area control. Okay, yeah, area control. I would say area control. So that, um, it... The clan markers, the tracks, and all that, it incentivizes you to play a certain way. It does. Because it, you're like, well, you know, I could go to this area and win easily, but I don't need that so much. Or I do need this over here. Now i got to fight for this. And there's a lot of good, I, I hate to say catch-up mechanics, but it makes it to where the snowballing is not as hard as other games. Even though you win a territory, your troops get removed and the losers stay. That makes it to where you can kind of play in two turns. Well, I'm going to put some guys here and lose on purpose. So the next turn, I already have a leg yeah. up, and I can put more people here and then dominate. So you can kind of, there's a lot of strategy involved in where you place your guys at what time. The cards in this game really amp it up. The cards have some drastic things that can happen. It can make your combat team that's puny be all of a sudden a force to be reckoned with. I mean, it, it's fantastic. Love the miniatures. I can't wait to try the expansion. You do have the expansion. Yes, I do yeah. have. Um, I don't care if it just had two mechs in the new expansion. That's that's two more. Yeah, um, and more cards is always oh nice. yeah, more cards is awesome. So I I this is the game that I will be buying in the near future. One of my favorite games I played. I have of course only played it once, unfortunately, but it's it's it, that good. The thing is, it, it 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 what makes it so good is the fact that it it's so simple. The, yeah. the rules are clean and precise, and you have your actions that you can take. Except for one rule. Yeah. The glossary rule. Yeah, that was kind of... Yeah, yeah, the rules. Make sure you read the glossary whenever you get that game. Read the glossary, because there's rules in there that you won't see anywhere else, which makes no sense to me. But this, apart from that, the rules are very clean and precise, and the area control aspect is so straightforward. You just move directly to the area that you want, and you keep on trying to maneuver and move your people around to the other areas to decide... And you can surprise people. They'll think, oh, they're really going for this area, but you can then shift a bunch over here and surprise people and take something that they thought was a sure thing. Yeah. And the and the cards are very thematic. I mean, you oh, lose yeah. honor points for betraying someone or as a betrayal card that it, you lose a lot of honor, but it does something really good for you. There's a, 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 a what, do you, what do you call it, hostage card that makes you lose honor, but you're which makes sense. You're you're holding a hostage, so that's dishonorable, and you're threatening. You're saying, I'm going to kill this person if you don't do whatever. 
giver. So I like the thematic ties. And then there's a marriage card. It costs mm -hmm. money to do the marriage. So that makes sense. Weddings cost a lot of money. So I like the fact that not only is the gameplay good, but the theme is actually oh, put very in the well game. integrated and prevalent throughout everything you do. Yeah, very, very, very pleasant. There, very happy with that. I would probably say probably the strongest theme game on my list as far as all things considered. Okay, here we go. Bam! All right, your number three is. I think. Oh gosh. Yeah, this one, Jared. He likes this one a lot. I love this game. <laughs> This is uh, a Game of Thrones a board game by George R. R. Well, oh gosh, George R. R. Martin was, of course, the, the, the one who made the, the books. Yeah. But it's Christian T. Peterson who designed it, and it's Fantasy Flight Games. As you can see, Fantasy Flight features pretty highly on my list here. And this is another Dudes on a Map game. And it is so good. I mean, it... What Forbidden Stars had that this also has, I forgot to mention there, is the Secret Orders. You put, you put your orders face down. Now, in Forbidden Stars, they did something really cool, which was that you could stack them on top of each other, which affected the order in which they happened. I like that. But here, you don't do that, but for each area you have, you put down a secret order. It could be an attack order. It could be a defense. It could be a raid. could be a support. And that's one thing that makes this game shine so much for me. Even though I don't get to play it that often because it's long and it takes mm. three players, just and three is not... Four is better. Oh, yeah. You really want to get to four, in my opinion. Some people say you have to have six for it to be good. Four makes it good to me. And I can even play it three and enjoy it, but four is really good to me. But the fact that you can make alliances and you can actually play a support token. This person is going to attack this person. They say, hey, could you support me and add your forces to my battle to help me win? You can say, sure. But whenever you actually, the rubber meets the road and the battle is about to happen, you can say, ah, I'm going to support the defender instead. You can, the, the, the manipulation <laughs> oh, is... It's it's almost borderline social deduction in a lot of ways, <laughs> and I will say, are this. you a traitor? <laughs> I I love and hate this game. It's probably okay since we mixed that being dudes on the map. This is probably my favorite dudes on the map game. Really? Probably over Forbidden Stars, believe it or not. Really? Which I know that surprises that, you. That blows my mind. Because the vitriol half of this game. <laughs> I I have probably played this game probably like five times, and I have won like three of those five, and I hate it. But I also like the game. The reason why I don't like it is th it, it really depends on the people you play with. I'll agree with that. Okay, if you're... Not, not, that's not even because of the mechanics. It's because this game is long already, and you will play with people who go... Yeah, there is a certain amount of analysis paralysis. You and, need... And I don't even... I'm, I'm probably, you know, participating. Oh, and, and everyone's guilty of it, especially with this game, because... The, and that's a credit to the game. There's so much you can do. There's a lot of... Okay, well, what are they going to do? Can I get away from my area, or are they going to come and try to take me in? Hey, are you really going to support me, or are you going to stab me in the back? And the card combat in the game is, I personally think it's the weakest point, because the whole, like, wounding and killing of units is strange to me. Because you can beat people, and not really but they don't them. die. But if you play this card, you got three of their units. It's like, that's a weak point for me, because it feels that victories are not as impactful as they could be. Well... Let me just say this. The reason why that doesn't bother me is, in one sense, it's somewhat thematic because, you know, really, armies, whatever they're fighting, you know, it's oh, usually yeah. not just slaughters. slaughters. People retreat and someone takes the area or whatever, mm -hmm. so I can live with that. What I like about it, about the card combat, is each person's different. First of all, your location where you start is different for each different family. Mm -hmm. And then your cards are different, which mean you have different things to worry about. Like, you know, if you have the, the mountain for Lannister oh. that has three swords, so he can kill three units oh, yeah. if he wins. Yeah, that's, that's big. That's huge. So it's those kind of things that keep it interesting for me. Switching who you, which family you are, adds a lot of replayability. And I... And negotiation is a big one for mm -hmm. me. I like dudes on a map. I like negotiation. This puts them both really tightly wound together. Yes, there's a lot of downtime. That's But this is a game where I'm okay with the downtime because I need that time also to be thinking about my next right. move so I can live with it. And I will say again with the in regards to the combat, it does feel kind of weak because you technically only have two units on land. I kind of wish there was a little more variety. But at the same time, given the theme... There is only dudes and horses, so that's really kind of the oh, only. Oh, way don't forget, there are a few little siege engines that you can use. Oh, sorry, there are siege engines. Even though siege they all, there's very few of them, so you don't see them that often. Oh, and one thing I highly recommend is since all the family's cards are specific to that family, everyone should have access to a list of those cards. 
Yeah, we, so, which we have. We made a list for that precise reason. Which makes it to where when you do go up against somebody, you know what they've played. So now you got to think, well, what are they going to play next? What card do I need to play to counter what they might play? Because if, it, first of all, if you don't if you don't have that list, people who've played it more have a distinct advantage because they not, they know oh I know they haven't played this card, so everyone should be on the same playing field in yeah. essence. And and it gives it another layer of strategy. Yeah, you know, I don't want to fight that guy. He has the mountain in his hand. You know, I I, I don't want to die. So <laughs> there's a lot of strategy as far as that goes, and I, I think it's a fun game. I just I also hate it. <laughs> All right, moving on to number two, this OK game right here that has already made an appearance. I think this is, this is the first crossover we've had on our list. Yep, and only I can assure you, it is not the only. Huh? No. Wait. What? No, we're only on number two, man. What have I said that you could possibly? Well, we'll find out. I'm stuck. He don't know. He just doesn't know. This game is fantastic. I love... Oh, that's right. That's right. I do know. I that. love Nordic Mythology. This is Nordic Mythology. The card game, the theming is awesome. The artwork's the, awesome. The gameplay is awesome. There's a, there's an awesome aspect of Take That, because you can play certain cards that they don't think that you're going to be playing. You flip it over, and boom, you smoke them. Probably my favorite dueling game that's not... I mean, I don't really... I guess Pokemon is a dueling game, but... As yeah. far as a self-contained, this is probably my favorite. Um, even over Star Realms, in the sense of you typically play with two people in Star Realms, this just does it right. It does. It's it's the, tight and it's good. The tension that's built, the cards do so much impact for even how little the card is. There's a lot of reading of the other player that you kind of have to really be cognizant of. It. This game is fantastic. I wish I owned it. I do not own it, but I will in the future. The best two-player game, almost. Yeah, it, it's 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 awesome. It's really awesome. Okay, so that was your number two. That's one of them. Wow, nice, 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 nice. Uh, my number two is way up here, and I'm not gonna pull it down because it's just too big. Twilight Imperium. <laughs> That's what I figured. Bam! <laughs> Dudes on a map comes again. So many in a row. We got Kemet, Forbidden Stars, Game of Thrones, Ti3. That is obviously one of my favorite mechanisms. I like having armies, moving them around, and what this game does so well, you don't have negotiation in the same sense that Game of Thrones does, in the sense that you can actually support, but there is negotiation in the sense that you're, you really do want to talk to people and work together to figure out how you can get someone to help you stop somebody else or something, or make an alliance and listen, let's just stop right here and let's not hurt each other, and then you can break that alliance later if you want. The action cards are cool, the fact that there's so many different units, and and you're trying to get those technologies up so you can get really cool stuff and then get War Sons, unless you're the Embers of Moolot, which is Jerry Pudger. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> there's just, there's, there's so many different strategies you can take. Do you want to go for the military strength so you can go blow everyone away? Do you want to get a lot of good technologies that just help you strengthen yourself economically or some other way? Do you want to build up your defenses and turtle and try to just take your resources and try to get points? But the objective, since they come up secretly, you don't know exactly what to do. And that's one of the things that is a, a maybe a, a bad or good thing, depending on how you look at it. I like it because it makes to where you don't know right off the bat, I'm going to turtle or I'm going to go attack. You have to be flexible and fluid, and it makes it to where it keeps every game interesting because you never know what you have to do. So you try to do a little bit of everything so that you can be good no matter what comes up. Man, is it, and then the tiles, I just want to say, the one through eight, whenever you, you choose the tiles and that decides what your main action is, you have other actions you can do, but your main action, and other people get to follow if they want to and get a little benefit, that system is so good. And with the expansions, you have different tiles that you can choose instead, which adds more variability. Whew, super good. Um, I played it once with you um, and our uh, mutual cousin, Zach. It's a lot of fun. It's it's really good. The reason why I don't think it, again, kind of like Forbidden Stars, the reason why it doesn't make my top ten is because I haven't played it enough, and there's so much to the game. And it's long. It's very long. We played, like, for four hours. Well, yeah, that was a three-player game. <laughs> yeah, that was just three players. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, if you play um, with six, you're talking like a... Yeah, for, bring your sleeping bag. I mean, yeah, I'm not a big fan of space theming. That's probably my favorite space theme game. It does a great um, job. Because it doesn't feel so... I don't know. It, it Because everyone has the same type of units, to me, that's what makes it easier to swallow. Because if you have multiple factions with multiple different units, it's like, oh gosh, you know, what did these guys do? Again? What do these guys do? Again? <laughs> everyone is all in the same playing field as far as that goes. But the different factions definitely have, you know, way different ways they need to play. Yes. And I agree with you. With picking your orders, the one through eight, 
That's is, huge. Is, is one of the best turn mechanics, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because it decides the order of play and it and tells you something do. that you get to do. Like, if awesome. you've ever played Citadels, take that but make it this big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's way expanded upon that whole idea of picking a number. You know, that's interesting that. when you say that because even some of the stuff like you can do trade, which is the equivalent of the merchant mm -hmm. in Citadels, you could pick warfare, which is like the assassin. There are specific tiles that could tie directly to... I think there's one called production or something like that, which you could say is the architect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's actually a pretty good analogy there. It's a good game though. Okay, let's move on to number one. The big number one. Uh, he knows exactly what mine is. It has to be that. And that is... BAM! Only the War of Indies Extended Edition. No, <laughs> the whole entire Battlecon uh, games. Um, you can't, when it comes to Battlecon, you don't point your finger at one and say, oh, I like that one because they're all the same. They're all the same. And that to me is what him and I have talked about greatly of what makes an expansion great. Is it adding more of the same or is it ex literally expanding upon it? And to me, this game does so well to add more of the same. Now, granted, this is kind of put my foot in my mouth because this is changes things. But the general expansions, like the actual, like the war, devastation, uh, trials, all those, just add more characters. And that's awesome because all the characters are unique. This one doesn't really change things so much yeah, this as adds, uh, this different one variations. The ones that change things are the um, the strikers. And, yeah, the strikers do. Uh, the armory does. The armory, yeah. Those those expansions. I this has also finishers. I think this one. Oh, well, maybe it's light I and could be wrong. Light and shadowed also changes yeah. a lot too. Yeah, that one changes some stuff. But it's a deal where. You cannot go wrong with owning everything in this series. Because it all works together very fluidly it, and... Not, not one expansion really changes much of the other. Personally, I definitely recommend getting Devastation first because you get the full player board. You yeah. get the most characters. To me, that's what makes that if one you, yeah, If you know that you're wanting that type of game, go for yes. Devastation. If you want to taste it, get Fate. That way yeah, it's or, small or, or to maybe. start. Uh, also, if you don't want to jump into it, you can play it online on Steam. It's on PC. You can play Battlecon on there. Don't know how big the player base is right now, but it's there. And you can play the tutorial and you can learn it that way. Granted, they do something a little different. They add these weird little deals where you can boost like your attack oh, yeah. uh, speed and one other little deal. Yeah, it's a little different. But that is a, it is a good uh, online version yeah, of the it's, game. Though. It's a good way to step into trying to play it in case you don't want to drop X amount of dollars to get. Yeah, that's a great way to try it for free. So. Highly recommend that. Okay, my number one. If anybody who's watching this actually has watched many of my other videos, I've pro you've probably heard me already say this, but and I don't see it changing anytime soon. Jared's absolute favorite game of all time. Also, he just forgot. You need to add oh, it to your I, list. I, I, I'm sorry. Cosmic Encounter. Oh snap! This game, three to five players. I always want to say three to six, but it's three to five. It's by what is it? Bill Eberle, Jack Kittredge, and Peter Lotka, and Bill Norton, and published by Fantasy Flight again. Fantasy Flight is just they they, they had a home run for them apparently. This game combines so many things I want. And it's not dudes on a map, so at least I can say that I didn't have five of them in a row. I don't think I had four in a row, but the. But this right here, it gives me what I like about dudes on a map, which is that combat, that conflict all the time. But it makes it to where it's constant conflict. Every turn is a battle. Every turn is somebody fighting someone else. It's card combat and hand management, which I also like. It has negotiation, which I also like. It has special powers, which this is the king of special powers when it comes to any board game I've ever played. And all those things I really, really like. And they combine into something that is so magical. Oh my gosh, check out my review. I mean, this game, or anyone else's, look at Tom Vassell's review. Look at, uh, what's his name? Oh gosh, Nick Minahan from Board Game Brawl. Look at uh, Shut Up and Sit Down. All of them, at some time or another, I believe, have said that this is their favorite game of all time. Not all of them say that now, but there's a reason. And see, I've, heard, I've seen people say, oh, people like Cosmic Encounter because of Tom Vassell. No, people like Cosmic Encounter because it's fun. Because Tom Vassell didn't like it because of Tom Vassell. He liked it because, guess what? It's a good game. Nick Minahan even said that it was his, whenever he said it was his number one, he said, and it's not because of Tom Vassell. He didn't say it in those words. He said not because of some other, you know, mm -hmm. review, famous reviewer. The point is, this game is one of those, it's a, it's a love it or hate it game, I'll put it that way. <laughs> and whether the hate is over here ready to say something, I'm sure. But, and that's actually an alien in here, the hate, so that will give you that next time we play. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the hate. Mm -hmm. But it just, it. it just does so much right. Now there's some chaos, there's no doubt chaos and there's some randomness, but in my opinion, there's tons of strategy here. There's tons of manipulation, bluffing, 
hand management that makes it to where even if you seem to be not doing that great, you can come out ahead if you know how to play people and do the right thing and, and keep your, you know, bluff. If you're good at poker, you should be good at this. So, wow. Oh, such a good game. Honestly, if I had to make a top five least favorite games, that's on my list. The reason being, and I try to go... Love it or hate it, like too. I said. My, to me, the biggest issue is for a game that's about direct conflict and about combat, you don't get to choose who you fight. Technically. And that's a huge problem for me. If I'm going to be in a war-type game, I want to choose who I'm going to go after. Where here is it? Yeah, the Destiny deck, you don't you, care you for. Just, you just draw a card. Oh, I guess I'm going to attack this person. Which, you can easily point the variant and say, Well, Jared, you like pressure. Look, you like die rolling. You like random. That's not the same, in my opinion. It is different. It, it's different. It's a different little taste of that. And it... That and... It, I don't like the combat system. I don't like the cards. I don't like the aliens. Oh. I, but, but at the same time, that's my favorite part. Oh. Because there is so much variety, that's awesome. But there are some clear counters in this game. Oh, no doubt. And they, I'll just say this. They even say uh, it's it's not a game that's meant to be balanced. It's, it is not. It's But that's what the point of the negotiation... And it is. Because there's going to be gang up. You're going to gang up on people who seem more powerful, like the virus. They were like, the virus is... He's out! We have to destroy him! And But at the same time, as the game shifts, you'll realize, wait a second, maybe this other person's a little more dangerous. And you're, you're, you shift who you're worried about as you play, and that makes the balance. But at the same time, you cannot shift in who you attack based on your own volition. It's by the draw of card. That that's, is true. That's but, there's a, but there's a statistical... Each person oh, yeah. is going to get fought two to three times, depending on if they draw their own card and stuff like that. So it's it, it makes sure everyone's getting targeted, and that's what's good. There's no gang up like, let's all just kill this guy over and over and over again. It's, oh, we're fighting this guy now? Which side do we want to be on? Do we want to help the defender or the attacker? To me, it works, but I understand why you wouldn't like it, but for me, it's an amazing mechanism. Yeah. Plus, I hate the negotiate card. I think that's the dumbest thing. Oh my gosh, okay, we're done with this. We're moving on to video games.